Last week after the launch of the new Modern Warfare trailer, we realized that Captain Price was going to be an integral character in the game. And after so, I thought it would be a good idea to dive into the entire story of Captain Price from the three previous Modern Warfare games. And needless to say, you guys seem to really, really like it. And seriously guys, really thank you so much for the support on that video. It was very clear that you guys wanted to see more of this series and you guys wanted to see some more in-depth looks at the characters throughout the Call of Duty series. So once again, this week we are going to continue the series and if you want to see more videos like this one, all you got to do to show me is simply hit that like button. Now since last week we looked at the full story of Captain Price, arguably the main protagonist throughout the entire Modern Warfare series, I thought this week we would dive into the other side of the story, the antagonist of the Modern Warfare universe. Although he wasn't really in the first Modern Warfare game, he still played an integral part in that story. And that is why this week we are arguably looking at one of the most evil characters in any video game ever. And that is why today I present to you the entire story of Vladimir Makarov. So Vladimir Makarov was born on April 10th, 1970 in Avanovo, Russia. Now, after growing up, he then went to Frunz Military Academy in Russia, which eventually he graduated as a captain in the Russian army. During this time, he worked as a paratrooper, but later in his career, he actually got picked up by the Spetsnaz, serving two tours in Chechnya. And during this time, this is when his hatred for the Western civilization began to take place. Now, during his time in Chechnya, he ended up being charged with some human rights violation. The game never goes in depth as to what he actually did, but because of these actions, he was forced to be discharged from the Russian army. And shortly after this, he was picked up by none other than Imran Zakayev, the main bad guy in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Now, technically, Makarov is not introduced as a character until Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. However, he has several important roles in Call of Duty 4. First of all, in the scene where Captain Price is hunting down and trying to snipe Imran Zakayev, he only ends up shooting off his arm, and Zakayev ends up getting away in a getaway car. As it turns out, we find out in Modern Warfare 3 that the driver of that car is none other than Vladimir Makarov. Money can buy many things, even power. The road to our future begins here, my friend. And this is even further shown in Modern Warfare Remastered, because in Modern Warfare Remastered, you now know that Makarov's in the car, so instead of killing Zakayev, you can actually shoot and kill Makarov, and in doing so, you actually get an achievement called Time Paradox. Now, another extremely important scene in Call of Duty 4 is the moment where you're escaping after trying to attack Al-Assad, and as you're escaping, a nuclear device goes off. Well, as it turns out, once again, the man responsible for this is none other than Makarov. Is everything ready? Do it. Thousands of souls extinguished by the push of a button. Now at this point, this was still Makarov acting under Imran Zakayev. However, at the end of Call of Duty 4, when Soap McTavish finally finishes off Imran Zakayev, this is almost a breaking point for Makarov. All of a sudden, he's lost a friend, a leader, and now he is on his own. And this brings us to Modern Warfare 2. Now, after the events of Call of Duty 4, there was a civil war in Russia. The winners of this war? The ultra-nationalists. Imran Zakayev was no longer looked at as a bad guy, but rather as a war hero. Now, a big reason why the ultra-nationalists won this war was none other than Makarov. However, the president, Boris Voroshevsky, I probably butchered that name, actually kicked Makarov out of the ultra-nationalist party. His reasoning? He was just too violent. After this, this is what set Makarov off. He declared vengeance against Soap and Price from Call of Duty 4 and said he was going to get his revenge on both the USA and Russia. And then the first time we actually see Makarov in action in any Call of Duty game is this. Now the real question is, is why does Makarov do this? He's attacking Zakayev International Airport, the airport in Russia. So the question is, why? Well, it's all in his grand scheme. As it turns out, General Shepard actually embedded a soldier within Makarov's group of people named Alexei Barodin. I may have screwed that name up too. But at the very end, as you escape, Makarov shoots you and kills you. That means the only terrorist left at the scene is an American. This makes Russia think that America caused this terrorist attack and essentially causes a war between America and Russia. 
So after this, General Shepard is reasonably pretty pissed off and sends two groups of people to attack the two known locations of Makarov. I've got a blank check and we're gonna use every cent of it killing Makarov. So with this blank check, General Shepard splits his team into two. One team is sent to a safe house, the other is sent to the boneyard, AKA a junkyard for airplanes. Now the team sent to the safe house was consisting of Ghost and Roach, and Makarov was not at the safe house, however, intel on Makarov is. Now, as they try to escape with the intel, General Shepard lands an airplane and this happens. Now, quite honestly, even watching this years later almost brings tears to my eyes. But the question is, why did General Shepard kill these two? And the answer is, the intel that they got from the safe house included intel about General Shepard's implanted man at Zakaev International Airport. Essentially, the only reason why he killed them was to hide the evidence. Now, after the attack on the airport, Makarov actually goes into hiding for two months. However, is still listening in and watching the crew as they kind of fight with General Shepard. Now, in the Boneyard, Price actually makes contact with Makarov, and this is what happens. Makarov, you ever hear the old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Price, one day you're going to find that cuts both ways. Shepard is using Site Hotel Bravo. You know where it is. Oh, hell. Looking forward. If I regard the Zakaev, you get there first. Now, oddly enough, as you can hear by that conversation, the only reason why Price and Soap McTavish were able to find General Shepard at the end of the game was because Makarov actually gave him the location. And as we talked about in Captain Price's video, we all know how that ends. Now, the reason why Makarov gave them the location is because by killing General Shepard, this allowed Makarov to come out of hiding, and so ensued the events of Modern Warfare 3. Modern Warfare 3 starts off with Russia invading the USA, however, the USA manages to push them back and the invasion fails. After which, Russian President Boris Vekaleski, once again probably screwing up his name, the same president who actually kicks Makarov out of the Ultra Nationalist, is gonna go to NATO to sign a peace treaty with the rest of the world. However, Makarov has much, much different plans for the president as he actually ends up hijacking the plane and then, well, this happens. So Makarov kidnaps the president of Russia in an attempt to get the launch codes from him. But of course, as we saw there, the president refuses. The next step in Makarov's plan is, well, I don't think I really need to explain it. Just watch this. Makarov detonates chemical bombs all throughout Europe in an attempt to create chaos and give Russia a chance to invade. Makarov also aligns himself with an African weapons dealer named Warabi. However, Soap, Price, and Yuri actually get to Warabi 
and they literally torture Warabi until Warabi gives them the location of the bomb maker Volk in Paris. They then go to Paris, capture Volk, and then torture him until he gives them the location of Makarov. That location is in Prague at a hotel called Hotel Lustig. So, Price, Yuri, and Soap go to attack Makarov. However, as it turns out, Makarov is once again one step ahead and has bombs set in both the location where Price is and where Soap and Yuri are. Yuri and Price make it out okay, however, Soap has some pretty fatal wounds. Once they get to safety, Soap passes away, but tells Price that Makarov knew Yuri. Reasonably, Price gets pretty pissed off at Yuri, but Yuri then goes on to explain that he was there for all of the big events. Once again, when Makarov was there, when Imran Zakaev gets shot in the arm, Yuri is the man in the back seat. He was there in Call of Duty 4 when Makarov pulled the trigger on the nuclear device. And finally, he was there at Zakaev International Airport during the terrorist attack. However, Yuri didn't want to kill innocent civilians, so he actually tipped off the FSB about the terrorist attack. So, Makarov turned on him. And this is when Yuri decided that he was going to get revenge on Makarov. After explaining this to Price, both of them kiss and make up, and then they once again return to hunting down Makarov. Now after this, Makarov's only ace in the hole is having the Russian president still and threatening to have the launch codes. However, Price and Yuri actually end up going to a diamond mine in Siberia and rescuing the president. And shortly after this, Price finds out the location of Makarov, Hotel Oasis. Who's this? Prisoner 627. I'm coming for you, Makarov. Haven't you heard, Price? They say the war is over. My war ends with you. Like it ended for Captain McTavish. Tell me, Price, how long did it take him to die? I've destroyed your world piece by piece. It's only a matter of time until I find you. You won't have to look far. Now, as Captain Price makes it to the roof of Hotel Oasis, Makarov tries to escape on a helicopter. However, Price has different plans. Price takes over the helicopter and crashes it back into the roof of Hotel Oasis. And then this is the final interaction between Makarov and Price. And as Makarov hangs from the ceiling, you really can't think of a more fitting ending for one of the most sadistic, twisted, brutal villains ever in a video game to this date. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the full story of Vladimir Makarov. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. Also, let me know down in the comments any characters you would like to see me cover in the future. They can be from any Call of Duty, whether it be a Modern Warfare game or a Black Ops game, you can pick. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, I always appreciate it if you hit that like button. These videos by far take the longest for me to make, so a like is always appreciated. And if you like what you see here, the best way to stay up to date on all my videos is make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you have notifications on. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out.